China has just shattered expectations. SMIC, once suffocated by U.S. sanctions, has unveiled a 2 nanometer chip and is already gearing up for mass production. This isn't a step forward, it's a detonation in the global tech arena. The impossible has happened and it's happening fast. Months ago, SMIC was cut off from EUV lithography, the bleeding edge of chip making tech, the crown jewel of silicon fabrication. Without it, two nanometer nodes were supposed to be science fiction. But they didn't pause, they didn't stall, they delivered. Not in theory, not in some lab prototype. This is real, it's operational, and it's moving towards scale. The shockwave hit hard. The US didn't see it coming. Taiwan's TSMC, still the global leader, still Apple's chip maker, is suddenly staring at a shrinking lead. What was once a comfortable dominance is now a tightening race. The semiconductor battleground just tilted, and not in the West's favor. Why does two nanometers matter? Because at that scale you're engineering with atoms. You're squeezing tens of billions of transistors onto a single chip, unlocking more power, more speed, less energy drain, and the backbone for AI that doesn't just run. It thinks, adapts, dominates. Apple's M3 chip runs on a 3 nanometer process and that's considered cutting edge. TSMC is developing 2 MAs but it's still not in mass production. SMA isn't waiting. They're scaling now. If they succeed, they won't just close the gap, they'll blow through it. While the US clings to 7 mm with 3 nm still crawling out of R&D, China has leapt forward in a single, ruthless bound. And this isn't just a race for faster phones or better laptops. This is AI. This is cyber warfare. Quantum simulations. Strategic superiority. Whoever controls the fastest chips controls the future. Economically, militarily, ideologically. But how did SMIC do it without EUV? With DUV, deep ultraviolet lithography, the very tech EUV was designed to replace. It's older, harder, more complex, but they weaponized it. Through multi-patterning, an intricate, brutal process of layering exposures, they bent the limits of DUV to their will. Precision at 2 and millish wasn't supposed to be possible this way, but they made it possible. They turned legacy equipment into a next-gen weapon. It's not elegant. It's not easy. But it works. And it disrupts everything. And they didn't do it alone. In the shadows, Huawei was there. Another titan cut down by sanctions now rising with SMIC. Huawei brought deep R&D, long-term vision, massive funding. SMIC brought the foundry firepower. Together they cracked the code under pressure, in silence, under the watchful eyes of a world that underestimated them. But that's just the beginning. The real masterstroke? China's fully domestic semiconductor ecosystem. No more dependence on American tools, Dutch lithography, Japanese chemicals. They've built it all, from raw materials to fab tools, from design software to packaging, locally, relentlessly, efficiently. SMIC doesn't need foreign input. They've built a new supply chain from scratch, immune to sanctions, insulated from pressure, fueled by necessity and national resolve. This isn't innovation, it's reinvention under fire. Sanctions were supposed to cripple them. Instead, they catalyzed a revolution. SMIC has done what no one thought possible. Scaled without EUV, innovated with outdated tools, partnered in the shadows, and erected a sovereign semiconductor fortress. While Washington argues over budgets and Taiwan clutches its lead, China may have just rewritten the global tech order. Not with Western help, but without it. No assistance, no permission, no compromise. This isn't a chip breakthrough. It's a geopolitical earthquake. SMIC isn't catching up. It's blasting ahead. The US isn't leading. It's reacting. The old rules are burning. The future is being redrawn in real time. This is no longer about market share. It's about power, influence, survival. And China just proved that even under pressure, even cut off, even underestimated, they will build. They will scale. They will win. The world holds its breath. Not because of war. Not because of a virus. Not because of a bomb. But because of something smaller than all three. Chip. Two nanometers small. Unthinkable. Impossible. Not supposed to happen. And yet here it is. SMIC, China's state-backed semiconductor firm, just did what the West thought couldn't be done. No fanfare. No leaks. No rumor mill. Just a quiet detonation of everything we thought we knew about who leads and who follows. And in Washington there's nothing. No emergency address. No televised reaction. No sanctions fired in return. Just a cold, paralyzing silence. That silence says more than any press release ever could. It's the sound of a nation caught flat-footed. The playbook, used so many times it became doctrine, is suddenly worthless. Export controls, blacklists, sanctions, trade restrictions. Tools once wielded like economic weapons now lie powerless, shattered by a leap no one believed China could make. Inside the halls of government, panic doesn't need a microphone. It echoes through every corridor. 
Behind closed doors, advisors scramble, briefings multiply, contingency plans melt under the weight of a new reality. This isn't a trade dispute anymore. This is a structural shift in global power. And it came not with missiles, but with microchips. Because here's what that 2 nanometer breakthrough means. If SMIC did it once, they can do it again. Faster. Better. Cheaper. And if that happens, the foundation of American tech dominance begins to rot from within. So yes, escalation is coming. More bans. More export blocks. More pressure. Maybe even whispers of dismantling China's chip ecosystem altogether. Scorched earth. It sounds extreme because it is. But when survival is on the line, so are the gloves. Now look at who stands to lose the most. NVIDIA. Intel. Qualcomm. Names that have ruled the tech world for decades. Titans, now vulnerable. Start with NVIDIA. The undisputed king of AI chips. The engine behind artificial intelligence. In the current world, NVIDIA's dominance is absolute. But in a world where China mass-produces high-performance AI chips domestically, at scale, at a fraction of the cost, that crown begins to wobble. Markets like Southeast Asia, the Middle East, Africa, they won't wait for Western supply chains to catch up. They'll go where the power is, where the price is right, where politics don't poison innovation. And then there's Intel, already battered, struggling to keep pace with TSMC, watching from the sidelines as its Asian rivals tear ahead. Now comes SMIC from China's backyard, blowing past Intel's 7 nanometer ceiling and heading straight for Sukun meter territory. Intel's future relevance teeters on the edge. If Ismait can manufacture at scale, Intel won't just fall behind. It will vanish from key global markets. Countries that used to depend on U.S. tech leadership will pivot. Neutral nations, non-aligned markets, they'll follow performance, not flags. Qualcomm? It's next, clinging to TSMC for its edge in manufacturing. But if SMIC can deliver a chip that's faster, leaner, and homegrown, then Qualcomm's grip on the mobile chip market starts to dissolve. Loyalty in tech is thin. Supply, speed, and scalability are everything. And when the alternative is state-backed, endlessly funded, and geopolitically aligned, the shift is inevitable. But this isn't just a business story. This is a geopolitical shockwave. Zoom out. Look at Taiwan. TSMC, the crown jewel of the global semiconductor world. The island's pride. The heart of its economy. Its leverage. Its defense. The reason it matters to the U.S. at the most strategic level. For years, TSMC was untouchable. The gold standard. Five nanometers. Three. Leading the world. But now? That dominance is being challenged from across the strait. If SMI proves they can match, or even approach, TSMC's performance at Suen Millers, the ripple effects are enormous. Taiwan's economy so tightly wound around TSMC starts to look fragile. Foreign investment gets nervous. Political pressure intensifies. Beijing watches. Washington braces. And the island's strategic certainty becomes a question mark. Add to that the legal heat. U.S. restrictions tightening. Huawei-related investigations. Allegations of backdoor sales. TSMC is being squeezed hard by both sides. The pressure isn't just financial, it's existential. Taiwan's semiconductor crown may soon come with thorns too sharp. And all of this, all of it, circles back to a simple, brutal truth. Chips are the new oil. They power missiles, satellites, AI, hospitals, banks, mobile networks, defense systems. They are the bloodstream of the modern world. And whoever controls them controls the future. The West has always known this. That's why it built the world around its own supply chains. But if China breaks free, if it becomes self-reliant at the bleeding edge of chip-making, that leverage vanishes overnight. The threat of sanctions? Useless. The economic pressure points? Gone. Countries that once feared Western retaliation will turn. They'll follow the silicon. They'll chase price, performance, and independence. The world map will redraw itself not in blood but in bandwidth. Not in borders but in wafers. And the United States? It's no longer setting the pace. It's trying to keep up. But wait. One question lingers. Can SMIC scale this? A prototype chip is a moon landing. Mass production is colonizing Mars. It's not enough to build one. You need to manufacture millions. Flawlessly. Efficiently. Economically. And there, the cracks begin to show. Leaks suggest SMIC's yield rates are low. Engineers are battling imperfections. Without access to EUV lithography, they're forced to use DUV. More complicated, more expensive, less precise. It's a painful road. But China has something more powerful than machinery. Resolve. Political will. National obsession. State funding with no ceiling. R&D that never sleeps. SMIC is backed by a government that's not interested in quarterly reports. Only long-term dominance. And Huawei, despite every sanction thrown at it, isn't slowing down. It's speeding up. Together they form a singular force. One with the time, talent, and tenacity to grind through the obstacles. Not just once. Until they win. 
So maybe it's 2025, maybe sooner. But when? Not if China perfects mass production of these next-gen chips, everything changes. The global chip market doesn't just shift, it flips. The West isn't just reacting to competition anymore. It's confronting its own decline. And the rest of the world? They'll have a choice they've never had before. A second option. A new supplier. A new future. SMIC and Huawei won't just be Chinese tech companies. They'll be global disruptors. Faster, cheaper, independent. And as they rise, the world will look at the West. Not as a leader, but as a legacy. The era of Western tech domination isn't just fading. It's ending. And the future? Speaks Mandarin.